Good evening, my beloveds. Today is Tuesday, March 24th. Things changed a little bit today. Sedgwick County, where I live, issued a stay-at-home order. Now really, for me and my two sons, that's pretty much been the case for the last week and a half, it seems. So I'm not sure what's going to change for us, but it feels very different. So what's been on my mind the last couple of days is more about being not afraid. When I initially talked about it the other night, it was in reaction to friends who were terrified of getting the virus to the point where they were afraid to touch anything. And that fear of, of catching it was what I was thinking about. Well, yesterday I heard a story on National Public Radio. It was on their program called 1A. And on that program, they were talking to employees who were losing their income. And I've been so determined to say this is to not say this is a scary time because that immediately assumes fear but in listening to their stories i realized if all your income has gone away this is a scary time so we don't need to be afraid of the virus we don't need to be afraid of dying because the worst case scenario, as my friend, the doctor, Reverend, the Reverend Doctor, Lauren Stanley says, what's the worst case scenario? We wake up having breakfast with Jesus and that's not so bad. So we don't need to be afraid of dying, but what about being afraid of living? That's what's been on my heart. You know, when there's a natural disaster, an earthquake, a hurricane, a tornado, it could happen in a really large amount of geography, but it's still not everywhere. And so there's still a great amount of geography in this world where people are not affected by that disaster and can reach out and help those who are affected. But this is different. This is very different because we're all in it. We all have to care for our neighbors. Number one commandment. First commandment, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, might, everything you can imagine. But the second commandment is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In order to love our neighbors right now, there's so little that some of us can do because we're all in the same situation. Now, to varying degrees. My family, we are so fortunate that um, my income shouldn't change, hopefully. Hopefully people continue to pay their pledge to the church and the church is able to continue to pay all of its employees but I feel fairly secure my husband's job um, is secure we just found out today that he is in an essential industry so the stay-at-home order does not affect him now that might change So we can't completely rest in confidence, but we feel fairly safe, especially when I think of our friends who work in restaurants, own their own businesses. 
their income has just stopped. Now, those who work for other businesses, they can file for unemployment and they'll get a portion of the money they made, but not all of it. Those who own their own business, though, they don't get unemployment. Okay, content warning. I'm about to talk about politics. I'll put a slide up on the screen after I know how long I'm talking about it, so if you want to skip it, you'll know how far to skip ahead. But I'm thinking about how we need the government to step in and help. So those of us on the bubble, we can feel fairly safe that our income won't go away, but it's not guaranteed. So we can do what we can to help others, but we also have to prepare for that time if our income does stop that we'll still be okay. Those who have lost all income right now, they need the government's help. So tomorrow, call your senators and tell them to figure it out because money needs to get in their pockets now to buy groceries now. There are folks that are really against deficit spending by the government and I understand that's a, a, a philosophy of economics that I don't share but think of all the times we have gone into a deficit to fight wars. We have gone into massive deficits for the purpose of killing other people. Now's the time when we need to go in a deficit for this war on this virus. We need deficit spending to take care of each other. Okay, end, end of my little political rant. But we all are in this together. This is actually an instance where people on fixed incomes have a stability that they can lean on. That this pandemic, this virus, isn't going to change how much comes in. And so for you, if that's you, if you're on a fixed income, you know exactly how much comes in and it's not going to change no matter what happens with this virus. Continue to spend what you have always spent. Of course, with spend within your means, but continue to do that. That cash flow is so important right now. Then for those of you who have extra security of knowing you have more than enough, spend extra right now. We have to take care of each other. And then I continue to pray. I pray for grace upon grace and grace from human to human so that the person who's unemployed will receive grace from their landlord, who I pray will receive grace from their mortgage holder. We need grace upon grace to hold each other up right now. So in the Episcopal Church, we have been talking for almost two years, well, a year and a half or so, about the way of love. This is um, uh, seven practices that we keep talking about and referring to seven practices in a way of life, a rule of life. It's very Benedictine these seven practices that will keep us focused on God and God's love and then the impact that has 
on our lives and the lives that we touch. So of these seven practices, we have turn, learn, pray, worship, bless, go, rest. So turn, you know, repentance, turning back to God. Learn, learning the teachings of Jesus and, and comparing, um, uh, learning the, the learning the teachings of Jesus to help us make decisions in our lives, praying, worshiping. I think those are self-explanatory. But right now, when we can't come together in worship physically, to continue to worship and keep that strength within us is important. Then bless. Bless is... It's, it's, it's really a little bit of evangelism in that it's sharing that love of God with others. When we bless one another, we are expressing, we are a conduit for God's love to other people. And then to go, go out into the world and do the work of God. And then to rest. Well, right now, under a stay-at-home order, I talked the other day, sometimes we need to rest. We're almost being forced to rest. I remember I said, do as I say, not as I do. I'm not very good at this. In fact, working at home makes me work more. But bless. Bless is that practice that really ties in with my thoughts of those who are losing their incomes because of this pandemic. We all need to bless one another. I hope you know that you are cared for and you are beloved. Tell someone else that. Tell someone else in your life how much they are loved. And if you're a tough guy, maybe tell a, a coworker or an employee, you know what, you're important to me and you mean a lot. That's another way of saying, I love you, but in a really macho way. We've got to share these blessings of love in order to keep, to keep despair from the financial situation from setting in. May we continue to be in community because it's connecting with one another that we will bless one another. Listen to one another when we're afraid. And then remember, that we need not be afraid, even when it's scary. Tonight, I offer to you the prayer from our prayer book. Prayer number 30 is a prayer for the unemployed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. Guide the people of this land to use our public and private wealth that all may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just payment for their labor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We all do what we can and share the blessings of God's love. We will remember that we're all one human family and we're in this together. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, shine through you to those around you, and remain with you always. Be well. Stay safe. Share the love of God.
ない。